Okay, I'll call the village board meeting for March 4th, 2019 to order. Roll call, please. Bill Dizzleberger? Here. Sam Balwick? Here. Susan Springman? Here. Bill Ranham? Here. Chris Elner? Here. Bill Willems? Aaron Moran? Here. First, we've got confirmation of open meeting compliance. Caitlin? I can confirm that the draft agenda was published in the Wanakee Tribune on February 28th. The final agenda was posted on February 27th at all three village posting locations. I have a copy of the affidavit that's confirming the posting um, here at my seat. And the final agenda and meeting packet were made available online on February 27th. Okay. Consent agenda. Would anybody like anything pulled or I'd look for a motion? I'd move approval of the consent agenda. By Susan Springman. Second. Baby. Second by Aaron Rand. Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I have it. Public comment. Is there anyone here who would like to address the board on issue not on the agenda for this evening? I don't have any slips. Caitlin, I don't know what you just said to me. I have no slips. Okay. Thank you. Todd, any comments for you? Um, I would just uh, show that kind of doing an experiment, a trial of an effort to provide a supplement to the agenda that lays out greater details uh, on the greater details to the agenda items. Um, granted, sometimes there's there's items that have um, acronyms and maybe terms that generally don't make sense, but are typically seen in agenda form. So, so in the comments that I add to the supplement, I try to explain some of the things and make it make some of that stuff a little more easy to understand, encapsulated with a short paragraph after each item. Um, and then sometimes uh, there might be an item on the agenda that actually doesn't have a, a memo to go with it. Uh, so this is a chance to provide a little bit of detail as to what that item is about in addition to the language. Um, I, I'm willing to admit that this is a trial. It, it may not be perfect, may, it might not be perfect yet. Um, it may be received well, it may not be received well. So I'm trying to absorb that information over the next month or two, see how it works for folks, make adjustments or make a decision to, to stop doing it. I'm, uh, so consider it a trial and I'm looking for feedback on it. Okay. Thank you. I just have one comment. If uh, anybody who gets the State Journal this Sunday, there was a Shining Stars thing that was in the supplement and three of our local businesses were recognized as being best places to work in Madison. Those being uh, Wanakee Community Bank, part of Oregon Community Bank, Bright Star Senior Living and Renew Air. And I'd also point out that there are three of our newer business that we've had uh, move into the community. Um, so those that we're, we're bringing obviously are doing some good things for their employees so they can be proud of that achievement. All right, first item on the agenda we have is a public hearing discuss and take action on extraterritorial jurisdiction certified survey map for Sikawati 6445 State Highway 19, Town of Vienna. So. Introduction. Introduction, it's please. It's uh, extraterritorial zoning. It's a two-lot certified survey map on Highway 19. The address is 6446 State Highway 19, and indicate the the reason for the split is to separate out the farm buildings away from the home site. And staff has no objections. Okay, then I'll open the public hearing for anybody who'd like to address the board on this issue. It seems like about two minutes has gone by, so I'll just close the public hearing. Um, I don't see any issues with it. It's part of Vienna, and so I'd look for a motion. Motion to approve. Motion by Bill Ranham. Second. second. I'm going to say second to Susan Springman. I think she was first, plus she's closer to me, so it might have been easier. Um, any other comments? Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Next under license and permits, discuss and take action on operator license applications for Bradley C. Benoy, Benjamin Olds, Liam Huftling and Jake Hobjoy. Staff has received and reviewed these um, requests for operator license and we recommend approval of them subject to successful completion of an approved responsible beverage server training course and review by the Wanakee Police Department. Okay, do we have a motion? Move approval on the operator license for the listed people. Okay, motion by Bill Ranham. Second. I think I have Joe on that one. Second. Thank Joe Zitzelberger. Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I have it. Next, discuss and take action on resolution allowing staff to proceed with 2019 sidewalk replacement. Kevin? 
Yeah, attached in or in the packet was the list of all the sidewalk trip hazards that we want to make repairs for this summer. This actually allows the property owners to make the repairs themselves within 90 days. And we will certainly extend that if anybody wanted more time. It's typically not cost effective because if they do it on their own, they're, re they're responsible for 100% of the cost. If they're part of the village program, the village pays half the cost. And typically the concrete cost alone is more than half the cost. So with that, this we're getting ahead of the schedule this year in terms of getting our notices out. And this will represent at least 25% of the village. Have, have all these property owners already been made aware of this? No, they'll after you pass this resolution, then we will send out the notices. Okay. okay. Any other questions or comments, or look for a motion? I'll make the motion to approve the resolution allowing staff to proceed with the 2019 sidewalk replacement. Motion by Sam Bowling. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Bill Random. Any, yes, go ahead. Is there any kind of an installment payment possible for people who might not be able to afford to pay for it all up front? There is. There, actually, we have a written policy. It has to uh, meet a certain threshold in dollars. I think that's around $2,500. So if it's more than $2,500, they can do it over installments. Mm. Um, maybe it's less than that, though. I don't remember. That's that seems something pretty I think high. I, yeah. I, I don't RNA. recall I don't either. Recall. Um, we haven't had any requests for that since I've been here. But well, the most dollars of are the usually costs are it might be as low as five hundred. Yeah, too. I mean, there's yeah, most I'm are just looking modest. to see if there's, there's any in here. Um, there's one over a thousand, and you know, you never know people's personal circumstances at the time. But it is yeah, important so that they get I think I'm mistaken. Fixed. I think it was a five hundred dollar cutoff in terms of they could spread the payments. Okay. But I'm not seeing the biggest one. I'm seeing here is is four hundred. I see and 11 they're typically 20. between 100 and 300. There's 1120. Yeah, that one's so probably one that yeah. we uh, would allow from. Okay, I just want to make sure that we help to accommodate people who might need it over a certain time. Is that in the letter? Does that yeah, in it's your in the letter? letter. Okay. Right. That'll in be in the letter. letter. Okay. Very good. All right, any other comments? Okay, others, we have a motion and a second. I call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Next, we have discuss and take action on resolution authorizing issuance of municipal revenant, revenue obligation in an amount not to exceed one million five hundred thousand to Kilkenny Farms LLC. Ryan, do you want to review it? Sure. Um, in your packet, you have a resolution starting on page ninety-two, going through page ninety-nine, that would authorize the issuance of the municipal revenue obligation that is related to the Kilkenny TIF. The uh, final version of the MRO is actually pages eighty-five. 91 of your packet. Um, back in 2017, the village executed an amendment to the Kilkenny TIF that basically indicated that if, if certain improvements were made and a certain amount of money was spent um, on the improvements, then the village would issue this municipal revenue obligation. And, and the, the first agreement that we had with, had with the developer works in coordination with the second agreement, too. And so the TIF, the, one of the purposes for the TIF was to help pay the costs associated with the county highway queue improvements. And so just to bring you back, the, f the first percentage of increment that is generated from the property actually comes to the village to, to, to pay, make those annual payments. Then there's language in the development agreement that talks about additional payments of the increments to be made. Now the last portion of those payments on an annual basis would go to the MRO. The developers provided proof uh, from their uh, in writing from their engineer indicating that they completed the improvements and what they spent on the improvements. And so, per the agreement, we, we need to issue this MRO. And that's that's the resolution is kind of long. It's prepared by uh, Village Bond Council. There's a lot of important language in it, but it effectively is one of the reasons why we use these municipal revenue obligations is to make clear that any payments are not general obligation debt of the village. They are only related to the increment that's generated from the TIF district, and that's what a lot of that language gets at. Okay. So the recommended motion is to approve the resolution authorizing the issuance of a municipal revenue obligation in an amount not to exceed $1.5 million to Kilkenny Farms LLC. Okay, any questions from anyone? Or I'd look for a motion. I'd move approval. Motion by Susan Springman. 
second by Bill Any other comments? Yeah. I just want to clarify something with Kevin, because I was chair of public works back then when all this was coming up about Q being such a bad road coming in. And we didn't have the money to pay for the improvements, but this is what's allow, allowed that project to move ahead faster, provide more money to do a better roadway. Is that right? Oh, that's right. I mean, uh, I think you, a I forgot about it, but this reminds me of why the, we. This uh, MRO is related to the public improvements that were done internal on that stuff, but certainly that the original. process is right. made a you know a two million dollar contribution or more towards the improvements on Highway Q, which we didn't have budgeted in our road. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any other comments? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Ayes have it. Next, we have discuss and take action on ordinance amendments to village code sections related to e-cigarettes. And I think we have a presentation with this. Do we want to introduce it or do we want to let them introduce? Well, they, they approached, approached you. Do you want to mention? I'll, why don't I let Jody, I'll have you just give a presentation. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce myself. Um, hello, my name is Jody Sorensen, and most of you know me as the uh, municipal court clerk for the village, but I'm actually here tonight uh, with Ryan Sheehan and Brian Kirshen, who's running a little late, uh, representing Wanaki Community Cares Coalition. Um, I'm just here to give you a little bit of information about our group uh, before um, Brian and Ryan will uh, speak further. Um, we are asking, why we are asking for the approval um, on the ordinance amendments to the village code sections related to e-cigarettes and tobacco-free zone. Um, we, hope it, we hope for it to be approved tonight to become an all-inclusive with electronic devices such as vapes and jewels. Um, the Wanakee Community Cares Coalition was established back in 2014. Um, our mission is to create conditions and opportunities to prevent and reduce youth substance abuse. And our vision is to make Wanakee healthy and resilient. Our uh, coalition provides information to our community on youth substance use. We continue to provide educational materials within our community, and we have resources available and provide such materials. We also provide trainings, we hold <coughs> local events, and we also distribute items into the community to help with prevention, such as our lock boxes and deterra packets. The coalition has been working very hard to develop a strong logic model uh, to focus on vaping by identifying the problem, the root causes, our local conditions, and activities that we can do based off of the seven strategies to help reduce vaping use among our youth. The first strategy is to provide information. So our goal is to educate parents and inform them on consequences and enforcements on school properties by presentations and brochures. The second strategy is to enhance skills. Um, we hope to provide some in-service training for our school educators, uh, support staff on trends, and training our law enforcement and having um, events such as the hidden in, plate site, hidden in plain sight room that gives parents ideas on what they're looking for if their kid is using uh, prescription drugs or vaping or hiding things in their rooms. Um, and also to help educate our local businesses on how to ID. The third strategy is to provide support. We are hoping to provide a quit line hotline for our youth and also provide funds for a second round of vape, vape specific compliance checks in our community. The fourth strategy is to enhance access and reduce barriers. We want to expand that quit hotline to a text a tip to include reporting of vape. Um, we are also going to hopefully have our reta retailers move their vape products behind the counters so they're away from the candy and youth products in their stores. The fifth strategy um, is change and consequences. Uh, we're hopeful that we can start attending the code meetings to let our high school students know of any violations would affect their athletic or music and so forth that is in their code um, signing uh, for the high school. And we also would like to recognize any local businesses that are compliant uh, as champions of use and give them a little certificate. And then we're also hoping that our police department will continue to issue um, citations for anyone violating um, the statutes. And the sixth strategy is physical design. Uh, we are hoping to partner with local businesses to put no vaping signs in their bathrooms and no smoking tobacco signage throughout Wanakee and also adding vape into vaping um, signage to the We ID um, signs that you find in local establishments. And the last strategy 
is a hopeful modify and change policies. Uh, we're hoping to revise the eighth grade health curriculum to include information about vaping and juuling. And then we're hoping to create an MOU with retailers to require all clerks to complete the Wisconsin tobacco check training. And, and with tonight, hopeful revised local ordinance to include vaping and smoke-free ordinance laws. Um, you have any questions on that? Okay, I'm gonna give the, the floor to Ryan Sheehan, who will now touch on what our local data is, and trends are telling us within our community in regards to vaping and juuling among our youth and the importance to revise our local ordinances. And we thank you very much for having us this evening and considering this. Good evening, I'm Ryan Sheehan. I'm a staff of Public Health, Madison, Dane County, and a staff of Tobacco Free Coalition for Dane and Columbia County. And I'm also a Wanakee resident. I moved here four and a half years ago, live in Kilkenny Farms, and have uh, three young kids, a uh, third grade boy, a first grade boy, and a three-year-old uh, daughter as well. So, um, but I'm here to educate about vaping and juuling and sort of what we're seeing as far as uh, trends are concerned. So we've had, but done a great job over the past uh, 15 years. Our cigarette uh, smoking rates are down among youth and adults. But the last line there, I'm sure I have a pointer here, um, going straight up is our vaping rates, and that's among youth, high school students. So from 1% back in 2012, our 2018 data is actually 20% of high school students mm -hmm. now use vape products, and that's actually 25% here in Wanakee. So we are higher here in Wanakee than uh, the rest of the state, um, which is why we're doing all these uh, things that uh, Jody was explaining for our strategies to help reduce those rates. Uh, so no matter what you call them, they're all uh, vape pens, e-cigarettes, they're all electronic smoking devices. So they come in different variety, e-cigars, um, uh, the Jewel's a very popular one, which I'll get into. So they're, uh, they're all e-cigarettes. How does it work? It's a battery operated uh, device that you can, that heats up uh, liquid nicotine and vaporizes it and it uh, produces an aerosol. So in simple terms, that's uh, what it does. So you, um, this device, you click a button to actually operate the battery and it vaporizes uh, the liquid nicotine. Nine out of 10 Wisconsin teens would not try e-cigs if they didn't contain flavors. There's over 7,000 flavors on the market with zero regulations. Um, some examples of uh, the candy flavors. Uh, you don't know what you're gonna get because there's no, like I said, there's no regulations, uh, no licenses uh, for vape shops, and so they can manufacture their own uh, nicotine as well. Juul is one of the reasons we're seeing uh, the epidemic. Uh, they've, done, they've done a great job of sort of making a very uh, sleek looking device, very easy to uh, conceal, and really strong amounts of nicotine. Um, you can charge it in one hour. And basically, it's uh, you, all you have to do, all a user has to do is inhale on the device to make it actually work. Um, the reason why Juul is so popular and so strong is because uh, they add benzoic acid into their nicotine. So uh, traditional vape product and uh, vaping devices have this uh, regular uh, nicotine and tobacco. Uh, Juul, when they add benzoic acid into their nicotine, it produces a nicotine salt. And so that allows it to have a super high concentration of nicotine, uh, almost 60 milligrams uh, per mil, which is a huge amount. One Juul pod, this little pack up here on the left-hand side, is worth one pack of cigarettes worth of nicotine. So it's highly concentrated and highly addictive which is why we're seeing the rates we're seeing in the high school. So some of the health effects and why we're asking, why we're asking why Wanakee Cares Coalition is asking to add these devices into our smoke free air law. Uh, as I said, it's not just water vapor, it's an aerosol, uh, little droplets of water, nicotine, propylene glycol, and some cancer causing chemicals. One is diacetyl, which causes popcorn lung. Uh, the chemical that comes off, it actually sticks to your lungs and causes uh, some scarring to the lungs. So that's one chemical that they're, they're finding in, in some new studies. Acrylonitrile, crotonaldehyde, and propylene oxide. And I've worked for about a month to uh, pronounce it. <coughs> so uh, all chemicals found in uh, some adhesives, uh, dyes, and, um, and plastics. Also benzene, which is found in the manufacturing of fireworks. So, there's a, so it might not be the 69 or 70 cancer-causing chemicals of a cigarette, but it's you know, four, five, six, it's still cancer-causing. Uh, nicotine also disrupts brain function. It binds itself to the, um, uh, the brain cells, especially in adolescents and youth, but also adults. Uh, nicotine can also cause 
um, lung spasms and also increased heart rates. And so those that are uh, predisposed uh, for asthma attacks and or heart issues, if they're inhaling the aerosol, they're gonna have issues uh, with those. It can exacerbate uh, those, those uh, uh, conditions. So we don't know long-term effects. E-cigs have only been in the market just a couple years, about you know, four or five years, but we are seeing studies that show that there are all these cancer-causing chemicals. So we're doing education around Dane County and Columbia County. There's policy that we can do uh, to uh, take action to make sure that we're not being exposed uh, to aerosol. Um, we can do our, our staff training at the high school and our schools. We can update our track your curriculum uh, within schools as well, excuse me. <clears throat> we can modify our school policies as well um, to have vape products included in their policies. And then finally we can add electronic cigarettes to our local smoke-free laws. And so that's what uh, Wanaki Cares is asking for tonight, uh, which would include vape products in all workplaces, uh, prohibiting uh, vape products where smoking is already prohibited. This is a signage that Madison did. Uh, Dane County also has an ordinance. So any uh, towns that are surrounding uh, Wanaki also have this ordinance in place already. And the village of Oregon is actually working on this as well, as well right now. Um, I think the ordinance language that's in front of you has these definitions in there. So this is model language that you're, that's in front of you. Um, really it's about keeping our indoor air clean. So it's a, it's a clean indoor air standard. Uh, we all have the social norms. We can walk into a restaurant, bar, bowl, and alley. You know, we go on airplanes, there's no smoking in there. So this would, uh, this would allow uh, these places to stay uh, vape free and aerosol free. So, and that's it for me. And I think Brian's gonna come up and uh, Brian Kirsten is gonna come up and say just a few words as well. If you have any questions I can answer as well after Brian's done, so. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, everyone, for allowing us to be here tonight. Uh, Brian Kirsten, I am the principal at Wanakee Community High School, but also serve as a member of the Wanakee Community Cares Coalition. My piece is pretty brief, and all that I would respectfully ask is that the model language that is in front of you tonight is uh, that you'd strongly consider that adopting into the ordinance. Um, I can just share with it from the standpoint of personally what I've seen over the course of the last few years in my role as principal is uh, there's rarely a day now that's going by, at least in terms of what we're seeing in the schools, where the jewels, the e-cigs, vapes are not an issue for us. And I think the more that we can do uh, as a community to hopefully have our public spaces be smoke vape free, um, hopefully that's gonna model those positive behaviors for you know, our youth in the community as well. And I think that we'd all agree that we wanna keep them safe and making as many you know, positive decisions as they can going forward. So again, just would respectfully ask that you consider adopting the language based on the information that uh, Ryan and Jody I know have shared with you this evening as well. And thanks again for considering that. Appreciate it. I have <coughs> several comments to make about this, but before I do those, I'll, I'm gonna ask for your guys' comments first. I think this is a fantastic thing. My only concern is uh, there's a couple of places in here where um, electronic delivery devices are mentioned, uh, but then not in other sections. So I'm wondering if we need to add that in. Uh, we can Will you want me to walk through what you have to try to address that question? If, sure. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, there, there are four different sections of the ordinance amendment. The first one is, is section uh, one that is on uh, page 101 of your packet. And so uh, some of the comments to date have been a request to amend the village code effectively so wherever smoking is prohibited, use of e-cigarettes would be pr prohibited. And so currently we have language in the village code in section 26-111 where we've adopted by reference the state smoking prohibition, which is section 101.123 of the statutes. So if you look at the, the ordinance amendment and you look at section 26-111, section A is currently in our code. And what we're proposing to do or what this ordinance amendment does is introduce B and uh, to that section and it's you know essentially what that is saying is everywhere where we prohibit smoking within the village based on what's in the state statutes we would also prohibit the use of electronic delivery smoking via electronic delivery devices and 
you know, there is, there has been, I, I will tell you a couple of things. I know that there is some discussion at the state level to try to address the use of e-cigarettes. Um, I don't think that those discussions prohibit you from acting tonight. Um, within the state statute right now, so section 101.123, there is language that gives local authorities to adopt their own ordinances so long as the ordinances comply with the purpose of the statutory section. And I think there's a pretty good argument that says prohibiting the use of e-cigarettes in the same locations where smoking is prohibited is consistent with the purpose of the, the, the smoking prohibition in the state statutes. It's not ironclad, but I think, I think there's a strong argument. Um, I know that the state is looking at this. We don't know what they're going to do, but no matter what they do, it doesn't prohibit you from acting tonight. If they turn around and they want to make a, a state law on how, and they want to take away the authority to deal with e-cigarettes from uh, a local basis, they have that power, but there's nothing that says you can't adopt this ordinance tonight if you want to, and then the state will do what the state does. But that's what section one of the ordinance does. It takes existing language within our code and broadens it so that the use of e-cigarettes will be prohibited everywhere that smoking is prohibited. Um, the second section of, of our code deals with just village-related property. And so what, this is section 26-112 of the statutes, where there's language that says, you know, and, and my assumption is we might have adopted this code language before we adopted the broader, uh, you know, language where we adopted the state statutes. But nonetheless, we have language in section 26-112 that talks that prohibits smoking in all buildings um, owned, leased, or rented by the village, and that would even include our trucks, personal property too. And so, what we're proposing to do is within that section, we have two different prohibitions that relate to smoking, and we're, we're, we're talking about adding a new subsection C, that essentially the same language that, that in the in the previous code provision that I talked about. We're just saying wherever we prohibit smoking within section 26. -10. 112 of our code, we're now prohibiting the use of e-cigarettes. And so for both of those changes, um, we're just adding to existing code provisions. The, the third section of our code, or the third section of the ordinance amendment is actually what would be new language to the uh, village code, but it's based on state statute language. And the state statute language really says basically you can't smoke on school district property but the school district has the ability to allow the use of tobacco products nicotine products cigarettes and electronic delivery devices on premises owned by the school district and rented to another person for non-educational purposes so if you look at page 102 of your packet and you look at subsection c that language is effectively taken directly from the state statutes and i do think that we have to mirror that language what we've the difference between our code provision here that deals with the prohibited use of tobacco products nicotine products and cigarettes on school district property we have broadened this so that all the prohibitions in the state statutes that relate to smoking also relate to the use of uh, e-cigarettes and so similar concept as what we were doing in the other two codes the other two sections this is just this would be new to our code language um, but we, di we, we do have the authority, I believe, to adopt it. And I know, for example, that there are other communities that already had this language in their code as it applied to smoking and use of tobacco products on school district property. They have since updated their code to basically this exact language to prohibit the use of e-cigarettes on school district property. Can you address the, the last sentence of that section where it says the prohibition contained in this subsection B includes but is not limited to the use of an electronic delivery device? Is, was that really the part that we're talking about that was added there? Yeah, that's, that's effectively the language that's added to what the state statutory language. Okay. So if you look at that, the first sentence in section B, that's basically language that's taken directly from the state statutes. Okay. And we've added language to this to make clear that it also applies to the e-cigarettes. And are we okay with not having it listed along with tobacco product, nicotine product, or cigarette? I, th I think that was the purpose for having the definitions in the section. Okay. So each one of those, if you look at the definitions of tobacco product, nicotine product, product and cigarette, yep. those are all taken from the state statutes. Sure. We've added number four 
because we want to broaden the scope of this prohibition to cover the e-cigarettes. So the goal really is to leave the language as it is in the state statute and just yes, it. yes. Perfect. I think I think that's the safest ground to okay. kind of move forward. The last the last section of our code. We currently have language in our code in section 46-101 that prohibits the purchase or possession of tobacco products, nicotine products, or cigarettes by minors. Right now it's a shorter section where we just adopt by reference the prohibitions on, those, on that activity that's in the state statutes. Um, what we've done here is, is very similar to the prohibitions that I just identified for the school district property. We're taking language in B and C that's effectively from the state statutes, and we're, we're spelling that out in, in our code as opposed to just having it by reference. Then we're, we're, we're inserting the same definitions in Section A that, that we have for the school district property that, that talks about tobacco products, nicotine products, and then the electronic delivery device. And then within B and C, you'll see that there's a, there's a last sentence so basically the first sentence of B and the first sentence of C is language that comes from the statutes. And then we've added that second sentence in each section to make clear that the prohibitions that are identified in the first sentence apply to the use of the e-cigarettes. Okay. Did, did, did that answer your question? Absolutely. Okay, good. You did very well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sam, any comments? Um, two questions. One is, is there a danger to the secondhand smoke involved with e-cigarettes or vape pens or any of that? Is that? Can I answer that? <clears throat> um, so the uh, aerosol and vaping powder. Right. That's containing the same byproducts. So when you actually, um, when someone uses a, a vape pen, that chemical reaction, that, so the actual liquid nicotine um, pods contain uh, propylene glycol, glycerol, water and nicotine. But when you have that chemical reaction, when the battery heats it, super hot, you're getting those chemicals that come off. So all those chemicals that I said is actually coming off in the aerosol as well with the nicotine, yes. So they're... Similar they're, qualities to what you're getting in. Yeah, and I think as I was saying, there's not these, you know, 70, you know, uh, cancer-causing chemicals like in secondhand smoke, but you're still having some cancer-causing chemicals. So there is a danger in the aerosol, yes. It's not just masking water. it with that sweet smell or whatever it is that comes off those. Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, and then the other question I have is, uh, do we hear anything from our local businesses? Are the bars concerned? Is there anybody that's seen this and opposed it for any reason? I can answer that, but I'll wait. If you guys have anything until I make my comments. I'll answer your comment in a second. Okay. That's all I got. Sue? So my comment relates to do we need a public hearing on this because it's the first we've seen of it. Has the community seen it? I don't want to delay it, but it's a typical process to you know, let people know about something and then have them be able to speak. You could, I mean, I would say this, you're not required to have a public hearing on this. If you want to have one, you certainly can do that. You, you could, you could, the net, you know, depending on when you, whenever your next scheduled village board meeting, if you wanted to, well, depending on, let me step back. The question is how many notices do you want to put in the newspaper? Depending on how many notices you want to put in the newspaper for a public hearing, that then really kind of depends on when you can have it at your next board meeting. But you definitely can have a public hearing. You could table this tonight if you wanted to, to get more input from the public and then put it back on an agenda. My, my biggest point is to make sure people know we're considering it. and They wouldn't necessarily go looking at the agenda. They'll read about it now in the Wanakee Tribune. But you know, if we pass it, we've passed it, and they will not have had an opportunity to make their comments pro or con. I would hope most people would support this, but just a question. Okay. Being in the medical industry, I kind of mm -hmm. probably figure out where you're going to feel on this, but. So do we think this, I mean, does this cover, because there'll be another way of delivery of nicotine, they will find another way. Does this um, protect us from the next way? I think it's difficult to tell because you know, this one is new, and so when you look at, the, you know, all municipal code provisions, because, again, other communities have updated their code the similar way that this is being proposed. They've had to do it, though, because no, none of the code language addressed the, the mechanism to get the nicotine the way that the new, um, the way that Juul does. And so I, my belief is, depending on what the next way is, it, it may still have to be updated. You know, it, this, this definition of electronic delivery device is fairly broad, so it may cover it, assuming that it's somewhat similar, but it's, it's difficult to tell because you don't know what that next 
product is going to be. I mean, there will be skin absorption ways. I mean, we use them already for treatment. So now the next, I'm sure somebody will find a way to deliver it through skin. I don't, I do not doubt what you're saying right now. I just, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure if our, I think there's in all likelihood, the next product may require another update to state statutes and code provisions, and we would just have to do it. We can't put anything in ahead of that. We have to go with that. I would, my recommendation would be to not try to anticipate what they're going to do and to deal with it at the time that it comes. Well, it's the third most addictive chemicals in the world so that, we, that we know of. So it's like it's a little bit, it's I, common and it sells well. So. I, I agree with everything that you're saying. Eric? I oh, I have one more. I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> so the school, like if you, you're adults at the school, how are they going to manage the adults at the school that are, because we have some people are using nicotine as treatment. I mean, is there withdrawing? Is there a way to, are you gonna be able to manage that? So there are people who are taking nicotine versions that are you know, basically, I mean, treatment that we are using as they withdraw. Are you gonna be able to, are you gonna, who's using it for, you know, as a habit and who's trying to get off the habit? I would hope. you, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and, and you know, that very well may be going on right now. Um, I can't speak to the fact that it wouldn't be going on, but I would think that the way that we would manage that, at least from the standpoint of our own uh, staff and our school community, would be if that is something that they're using basically to get away from their nicotine addiction, that they just take a note, let us know what's going on, and that's something that we're going to work with them on. Just like it would be, you know, when we have students or we have other individuals in our school community that have to have certain medications, those are going to be certainly available to them, but they're going to be in a controlled manner too throughout the course of the school day. Thanks. Thank you. Is that addressed? From a legal perspective, at all here, I, I, there's not a specific <laughs> exe ex exception within the code language that would deal with for prescriptions. It, it, I would say that it is inherent with every, with every code that we have on the books right now that you have the discretion okay. to basically deal with that issue and not issue a citation. Thanks, Joe. Done. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> I think this is an important update. This is problem I mean I it's your token young person like this is what's happening and I think it's good for us to take action so. all right I don't look at you as a token young person <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I mean no not that. <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> using got it us all. Got all at once <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is probably a, a topic that's more near and dear to me than any of them that we're going to deal with tonight frankly um, I had a parent, two parents that were smokers, and one of them stopped the day the Surgeon General said that it was bad for you, and the other one didn't. And she died at 56, early. And I worked in the tobacco fields when I was young. Mr. Tierney's here, he knows that, because I worked for him <laughs> in those. And every day when we got finished, our entire arms were full of black tar, which was going directly into people's lungs. So I know that that was an addictive and a problem. So when I first was elected um, as a trustee, I came to John Lobmeyer and I said, I'd like to get a smoking ban in Wanakee, which he told me, you're nuts. You're not going to make it through the next election. You're taking on the bars, the restaurants, everybody who smokes. You're going to go after that? And I said, yeah, because I think it's right. And it just so happens we passed in Wanakee the smoking ban before, so you'll remember this, before the state adopted. And ours was going to go into effect, but the states beat us to it. So we were, we were on the front end of this and, and getting that done. So your question about restaurant donors, when we did that, we formed a committee um, of the local businesses. We had Rip's Bar owner. We had Rex's owner. We had the Gold Nugget owner. It was not a, 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 a stacked deck um, to get a smoking back done by any stretch. And uh, I went down to Rex and I asked him, Sam, because your question is very, and I said, we're considering this vaping. How do you feel about it in, in putting us a ban in, in, or putting a ban on this? And he said the smoking ban was the best thing we ever did in our establishment. And when I hear that our stats in Wanakee are 25 percent and we're above what the average is, that's that's not a good trend that we're we're showing with that. And in hearing the statistics of that, yes, there are cancer-causing things, 
and, it, and, it, and our principal is here talking to us about it's, it's, a, it's something we should support. Um, it, it's hard for me to say, let's go out to the community. We went through a smoking ban, which this is new to our community. Most adults don't even use it at this point, comparatively to the students, I'm assuming. I don't know that for sure. I'm not, I'm, I'm not the expert you guys are. Maybe you can answer that question. But it's, it's hard not to include this for me. Um, Susan, if, if, if you want to have a public hearing on this, you know, and, and you feel that that's important, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I just think this fits very well with what we were trying to accomplish back then and, and still, and I'll support it um, and I totally in front see. of the community. I'm, I'm telling the community right now, um, Roberta, you can put it in there as clear as day. I, I support this, this, this uh, plan as presented to us, the ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, no, but no, as no, I stated, if you want to have this out in public and you want to have a hearing on it, I'm more than happy to do that. I, I thank the group for bringing it to our attention because mm -hmm. uh, we, we probably wouldn't have done anything if they had, hadn't brought it to us. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so that, that's where I'm at with it tonight. Uh, I hope I, hopefully I answered your question, Sam. So Rex was, Rex was all on board with us uh, as a local restaurant owner, restaurant bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I totally support it myself. I lost my mother and my father to smoking. So I've had many more than that who've died in my family. So I know what it does. And I've seen this more and more out in the community. And it's even disturbing if you don't smoke and you're in an environment and people are blowing it at you. I'm like, where'd this come from? I thought we couldn't do this anymore. So I know that, I mean, I think the general public would support it. And I think most bars and restaurants would nowadays as well. I just, it was just a process question I had. I didn't know what we needed to do. <coughs> Yeah, and, 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 and it's not required. Just, I mean, you can do it. I mean, and that's, you know, there's obviously, you all know, there are certain things by state statutes that we have to have a public hearing. There are certain times when we don't, and we've had them, even though we're not required. I, um, so it's, it's really up to your discretion. Let me ask you this. If it's, is it inappropriate for me to ask for a show of hands of the crowd to see if we should go to a public hearing with it? Is that inappropriate? Um, I would no, it's not a, inappropriate. We have a good-sized crowd here tonight. <laughs> Then ask for a raise of hands. So. <laughs> if willing, is there anybody who feels we should take this to public hearing? This topic. Okay, so, so yeah, okay. So then based on, we have several people in the room that say we should, then let's do it. Do you guys just want a class one or a class two? No, notice in the newspaper, it just, it, 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 we need to know that just from the standpoint of when can we put this next on the agenda? Explain that to us again. I can't remember all this stuff. We, we utilize a weekly newspaper, not a daily newspaper. Yeah. So, you know, when, for example, whenever we have a zoning public hearing, you have to have two notices in the Wanaki Tribune, and the second notice has to be at least 10 days before the meeting, which then creates, you know, you really got to think ahead because you, you got you to gotta have, have it on a one Thursday, and then 10 days later is the first time you can have the meeting. So it's, it's really up to you all since... This is not statutorily required. You can say, look, you know, if you want to, you could say whenever our next board meeting is, we want, it, we want to put it on the agenda and we want a notice for public hearing on the agenda and we want it published in the newspaper the two Thursdays before that meeting and we're good. And it will be published in the Wednesday Wanaki Tribune that this is a subject so people <coughs> will have seen it. So I have one other question for our friends that are here paper. tonight. We talked about tobacco and these things. Has there been attempts at putting other types of drugs in the list of illegal drugs into these? Unfortunately, yes. Um, we've had a couple instances uh, at school this year with uh, the jewels a little harder to do with THC being delivered in them. Um, the refillables, such as the Sorens, and I hate to disparage certain brands out there, but that's one that's a refillable. So students are. Um, some are entrepreneurial. There are certainly some that are, you know, very creative in terms of what they may put in the devices. Um, but it's certainly uh, possible for the THC to be delivered because we've dealt with that a few times in the course of the career already at the high school. Any other forms of illegal drugs? I can go into these. Yeah, I was saying anything you can liquefy can go into these devices. So uh, there was a young adult in the Milwaukee area who started to vape alcohol and went to the emergency room uh, right away. Can be vaped. Yeah, the definition is the 
the device and any substance that goes into it, not just nicotine. Yeah. Um, I don't want to take money away from the Tribune and their the, the legal section, um, but an alternative to um, officially publishing a public notice that at least I saw at the city level, I don't know if it's a state code or if it was a local code in my prior municipality where I worked, but they had a multiple reading process for ordinance changes. Brian, maybe you've seen that in other, so, so like today would be considered the first reading of a proposed ordinance. And then uh, it would be on the subsequent agenda as the second reading. In between that time, there's opportunity for the public to consume that through either the meeting materials or coverage in the local newspaper. And then action was taken after the second reading. There may have been some items that required a third. It depended on the section of the ordinance, I believe. But um, that, that's an, maybe a worthy alternative to, to generate additional public interest without calling for an official process and post publishing for public hearing. I don't think the public process would take us along with this. Is that we're talking? I, I mean, I, I don't. I we don't have anything. I mean, I know that Todd's talking about something that's not in our code and as an alternative. I, I've worked with people who've worked in municipalities where there's multiple reading requirements, and they all don't like it. It creates a, it creates unnecessary steps that are not required. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm you know. I, 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 I guess I'm saying don't do it. <laughs> I would, I mean, as the attorney, I would prefer the the public hearing process. Understanding there is a cost associated with it. I guess I bring that. If, I mean, we can spend your money however you'd like, um, but we don't. We anticipate some average expenses related to public hearings in our budgeting process. Kaylin's budget includes those expenses. If this is going to be a new process for every ordinance, then we need to talk about planning to do that. So that's why I offer the alternative. Okay. Other comments? I, I'm, I'm out of questions. So. I, I would also point out the next item on the agenda, which could potentially change when all of that happens. Ah. Gotcha. Any other comments? You, you, if you're going to go the public hearing process, and I and I did see the next agenda item, I mean, the for sure next meeting date is April 1st. And so in theory, you could put notices in the newspaper on the, the 21st and the 28th if you wanted to leading up to that March first or April 1st meeting. Because this isn't a statutorily required public hearing, you could put it in on the, tw the 28th, even though you don't have that 10-day window. Um, and then you would have two public hearing notices in the newspaper as well as it being identified as a public hearing on the agenda itself. Okay. Is that, is that how we want to proceed? I'll, I'll look for all of your guidance. I'm good either way. I, I support it as it is right now, but. I think we should have the hearing and, and we should pub publish it as we normally do because that's what people expect. Okay. Sam? Fine with me. Joe? I can go either way. I'd probably rather just, uh, you know, take care of it tonight, but either one's fine. So, get her done. I'm fine Which for me tonight, tonight, but. Okay, I'm so let's do this then. Um, I heard two people say they'd like to get her done tonight. And so, would one of you want to make that motion? Let's see if it just goes through. I'll take the motion to uh, approve an ordinance amending chapters 26 and 46 of the Code of Ordinances, Village of Wanakee, relating to public safety and public health issues. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by jo Joe Zetzelberger, second by Bill Ranham. Any other comments? Okay, I'm going to call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Let's do a roll call vote because I don't know what anybody did <laughs> on that one. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Joe Zetzelberger? Aye. Sam Baldwin? Yes. Sue Springman? No. Bill Branham? Yes. Aaron Moran? Yes. President Selmer? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you guys very much for bringing this to our attention. I appreciate coming in, talking to us. Thank you for your time.
I, it's probably uh, it's I, not I'm, a jewel, right? Uh, that's what I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just want to make sure you're not leaving stuff. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I meant to ask this, and I want to. Uh, where can people go to get information about this if they need to, or if they'd like to? What I would say is, um, for Roberta, if you can, I, the, I yeah. think this is an important piece for the public to know about. And Jordy just said, you know, to her. But the other thing that I would say is, if um, if people are interested, take a look at the Wanakee Community Cares Coalition Facebook page that's out there. Um, should be pretty easy to find. If not, feel free to, I think, either email Jody, you can email me at the high school because I can get you connected with that information as well and would be happy to do that. Um, we're just really fortunate to have, you know, people such as Ryan, too, that live here in the community that really are vested in, you know, wanting to move things forward in this area for, I think, the good of our students and hopefully good for the good of our community as a whole, too. Okay. Thank you. Again. You bet. Thanks. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay. Discuss and take action on March 18, 2019, Village Board meeting. It, well, it's discussing this at spring break week. Um, so concerns about both any of your availability or staff's availability and then the general public and their ability to participate. Um, so we're asking whether it would be appropriate to reschedule that date. I know there is stuff to do, so it's, I, th I think the cancellation isn't um, suitable in this particular instance, but looking at an alternative date is something we want to talk about. So, who's got their calendars? I'll, I'll start by saying that I will not be available. I don't really want to put security reasons for my home out of here, but I will not be here um, for the meeting. I won't make that meeting either. Nor will I. I'm here. So we have three. Probably here. I was going to be here, but it's also my spring break. <laughs> Maybe I'll <laughs> Maybe change, you won't be here. Yeah. Um, change my plans. Uh, be a blessing for him. So I don't know that we would have enough to, to hold our meeting at this point. Um, I don't know if Phil gave any comments. I had not heard not. Um, I'm a, a, the unfortunate victim of a, a spouse that's a teacher, so I don't have a lot of, of uh, opportunities to, to leave, and that's, that's, that is the week. So. Um. The, the two options that Kayla and I talked about was the Wednesday prior or the Monday following. Now, there is a finance committee meeting scheduled the Monday following. Um, is that 5, 5.30 to 6.30? It was because um, Sue preferred it not to start till 5.30. Okay. So um, but I think there, there are a number of things on the agenda, so I hate to say that a half hour would be sufficient. And... And that's, that's okay. I mean, we can talk about an alternative time, whether it's 6.30 or, or 7 for the board meeting, but um, that Monday following. 25th, 6.30, does that work? Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Here. Is everybody okay with moving it to that date? Mm-hmm. 6.30. Wait a minute, on the 26th? March 25th. 25th. March 25th. We have a finance yeah. meeting that night. We have a finance yeah, meeting. Yeah. 5.30. So we're still going to have the finance. Yeah, 5.30 to 6.30, and then 6.30 are okay. Send Adam. Okay. Have to let Adam know about fire. So if you can make a motion to select that alternative. Okay, I'll make a motion time. to move our Monday, March 18th meeting to Monday, March 25th, beginning at 6.30. Second. Okay, motion's been made by me, second by Aaron Morant. Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. All right, under old business, we have discuss and take action on proposed grocery store developments, <laughs> IVN Festival Foods at County Highway Q and Woodland Drive. I, I don't see this, unless we end up somehow talking about negotiations, I don't see us going into closed session. I think that's accurate. For this, um, this should all be an open session. Brian, do you just kind of want to lay out from the last meeting? Well, sure. I mean, this is a continuation of the, the, the information that was provided to you at the special board meeting last Monday night and a continuation of the discussion. We have, um, uh, you know, we've obviously been having considerable discussions with uh, Forward Development Group and with hy V uh, in regard to the project on the east side of uh, Highway Q. We've come to different plan commission and joint plan commission meetings and village board meetings and identified 
a proposed schedule for moving forward. I can go back over that schedule if you want me to. I did talk about it at the last meeting. Um, one, you know, there's a number of different components related to that project. There would be the annexation of the land. There would be uh, zoning that would be associated with it. There would be a land division. And there would be multiple development agreements, one of which would be uh, a TIF agreement. There has been a request for TIF assistance. Um, the, the schedule that we have now, and, and I think from a village staff perspective, we've, we, we've already noticed certain action or certain agenda items for next week's uh, village plan commission meeting and the joint plan commission meeting. There will be a discussion about uh, the zoning and the land division. Um, among other topics. And then we already have for the March 11th uh, Village Plan Commission um, a public hearing on the creation of the TIF district. We believe that no matter what you do tonight or, or don't do tonight, that we, we, we need to keep that schedule for, for March. We also have been approached across the street about the potential for development in Kilkenny Farms West and a grocery store for festival foods. Um, we have had preliminary discussions with them. We do not have a formal application. We have been informed that we should have a formal application for um, land division and for zoning and uh, for other more details related to the proposed Festival Foods grocery store by mid-March. We have also been informed verbally, um, although we don't have anything in writing yet, and we did request this by mid-March, that there would be a, a request for TIF assistance on the west side of the street. And, um, I, you know, going back to the high V project and the forward project and looking at the schedule that we had identified, not only do we have meetings at the March Plan Commission, March 11th Plan Commission, March 12th Joint Plan Commission, um, Right now we have scheduled for the April 1st Village Board meeting a number of items on that related to that development, including potential annexation of the property and the creation of a TIF district. And, and then potentially the agreements that would be associated with the development as, it was, as well as zoning and land division. And one of the reason why we brought this forward to you, uh, I guess is twofold. W one, um, we had a request from Festival Foods and from Kilkenny Farms West to have the opportunity to have an apples to apples comparison between the two projects. Um, that I would say is more developer um, request, developer push. Uh, this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something from, from my opinion as the village attorney and if anybody on village staff disagrees with me then they'll have to chime in, but there is also the issue about the creation of the TIF district. And what the decision would be by the village board or the plan commission, quite frankly, at the March meeting, but then the village board meeting on April 1st, does it put you in a difficult position to address the TIF, the TIF creation, you know, not necessarily knowing what the alternative is on the other side of the street? And um, I, I think I will tell you the same thing that I told you last week. I think that you have total discretion. I think if you want to, you can say, we've been talking to hy and Forward Development Group for a long time. We, village staff, has been in the process of negotiating a number of agreements. We've, 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 we don't have those completely done yet, but we've made a lot of progress. And if your thought process is, you know what, no matter what, I think a grocery store looks better on the east side of Q than it does on the west side of Q, so it doesn't matter what the proposal is on the other side of the street, and I think that we got a good deal right here, you could say, you know what, we're moving forward, including we're moving forward with a vote on the creation of the TIF district on April 1st. And that would be a perfectly reasonable decision that is support would be supported by a number of facts. As a lawyer, I have to acknowledge that the exact opposite decision would be just as reasonable. You could say, you know what, we want to delay the high V pro the, the schedule that we've identified for the high V and forward development group project. We want to delay that for a short period of time because since, in particular, since there's TIF assistance that's associated with that project, we want to be able to have a comparison of not just from a planning standpoint of what they would look like, but also potentially, you know, what is the TIF request on the other side of the street? Is it the same amount of money? Is it less money? What, what projects would be incorporated into, into, the, into the project plan? 
you know, all of those are a fair evaluation for village board members to make that would justify, if you wanted to, delaying the, um, the high V project. And I guess the, the terminology I used at the last meeting was putting a pause on it. Doesn't mean that you're choosing one project over another. You would just be putting a pause on one of the projects, at least the schedule that we've identif identified to this point, because you want to be able to have that, you know, project by project comparison. Um, as I indicated at the last board meeting, you know, Forward Development Group and hy have been very good to work with. They, the, the schedule that was identified um, in, in our discussions and the schedule that I identified at the last board meeting was in part driven by village staff's requests that certain public improvements get done related to the project in 2019. And um, if the project gets delayed by a month, I think that we would have to acknowledge that there is the potential that those, pro those, those public improvements may not gonna get done in 2019. And you know, that's another part of the analysis, I would think, from your perspective of, you might say, we, it's important for us to get those projects done in 2019, and I'm gonna, I, want, I want the project on the east side of Q no matter what, so I don't wanna delay it. Another analysis would be, um, those public improvements are important, but uh, from, from your individual standpoint or from your board standpoint, it's more important to be able to do the analysis of the two different projects to determine which one you want to choose and potentially which one you're willing to give TIF assistance. And that would justify, you know, say, all right, we're okay with the public improvements being done one year later because it's more important for me to do the analysis. Either, either decision, and I'm sure, you know, if you, you know, one of the, one of the benefits, I think, of talking about it last week and now talking about it today is hope you've had a week to think about it, too. So I think that we're in a position to try to answer whatever questions that you may have. You know, you are going to have a meeting now on March 25th. In theory, you do not have to make a decision today, although I would tell you that, you know, once I think it would be beneficial for the Plan Commission to know where the Village Board is at on this issue. And, you know, again, if you start, if you want to make a decision on March 25th, a week before that April 1st meeting, you're cutting it kind of short, is what I tell you, at least as it pertains to issues related to the creation of the TIF potentially. Okay, so as my style, it, I always like to hear from all of you first. Um, Sam, you weren't at our last meeting, I don't believe. Do you have any questions yourself? Right no, I that? tried to catch up on it. Um, I mean, I guess the one question that comes to mind is why, why delay high V when can we push festival to hurry up? I mean, why do we punish the guys that are at the table when get us what we need from festival or, is, or are they working as fast as they can? Well, the one thing I would say is that if, if the board were to decide to pause the one project, we would give the other project a deadline because we don't want to sit here waiting for that. So, I mean, yes, we have, that is something that is on our mind if the one project gets paused. Joe, any comments? Okay, Susan. How, when you talk about the pause, how long are we talking about? Because I understand there is information that will be coming middle of March. So are we talking two weeks? I think that we would, I mean, I would say that the pause would, at, at this point would be at minimum, we would set an end to it, but at minimum it would be pushing the, whatever would be discussed at the April 1st meeting to the second meeting in April. That would be the shortest delay the that we would have. Move from what? How long so are we talking? It, it, two weeks. Two weeks. At first, I thought we were talking like a long delay. Well, but it could be longer than that. It, but 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 that is the you know I mean by way of example only. I mean in theory you could get a submission. You you, you could decide tonight that you know yeah at this point we're going to pause it for two weeks. So we're not going to take action on April first. All of a sudden you get the submission from from festival and from Kilkenny Farms West. You see what the TIF request is. You see what the public improvements are that are associated with that project. And you say you know what there's no way this one is beaten high V, and and forward development group. And so you've had a two week two week delay. Another possibility is, oh, okay, we really need to think about this a little bit more now that we've seen the submission from the west side of Q, then, you know, maybe that's a viable alternative. Um, then the delay potentially, you know, then it becomes a real analysis and it's impossible to say how long the delay is going to be. You know, we have, you know, again, there's a lot of items that are associated with either development. Okay, one of them being the creation of TIF, and that is probably the, de the, the, the process that takes the longest 
understandably so, because it's public money. Okay, but the, the shortest delay is potentially just two weeks. One other question. There isn't a TIF district now um, where High V would go, is, and there's not one across the street where... There, there is not a TIF district where, where the High V and forward development, um, that is what's on the plan commission agenda for March 11th. That would be created. Time. Okay. Well, well, I mean, if well, you've got more steps, because if you don't have one, you've got more steps. Well, in any event, I, I think no matter what, if you're going to have a TIF on the west side of Q, it's either going to be a new TIF or it's going to be an amendment to the existing Kilkenny TIF. And there are still a number of steps that are associated with an amendment. You didn't to answer TIF. my question. So, is there one over on the west side? There no, there is not. But you could amend the existing one. You could potentially amend the existing one, yes. It's an identical identical process. It's the same process. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to understand. All right. So the pause provides for the people on a key. What does it give us? I mean, what is the benefit to so you know the TIF just the TIF values that we would pay is, or that we would be planner. responsible for? I, I think it the, the potential benefit is to be able to see what the proposal is on the west side of Q, see what public improvements would be associated with that, see what the TIF request is. I mean, I, I, we don't know what that is right now, and um, it's, you know, who, I mean, I, I guess I, I don't, I, again, I said at the last meeting, I, I am not advocating for either one of these projects, and I want to make that clear. I mean, in theory, the TIF assistance request on the west side could be dramatically lower, and all of this, that's something that you would take into consideration as you analyze which project is better. It could be more, and and then, um, and it could have better public improvements than the ones that are, I mean, we've, we believe at a village staff level that the public improvements that are associated with the High V project and Forward Development Group project are very good. Um, you know, we don't know what the public improvements would be that would be associated with the west side of Q, and in part, that that creates a little bit of un unknowns in relation to the creation of the district on the east side of Q, just not knowing what the request is on the west side. Aaron? All right, now. Okay. So I, I'm of the opinion that I, I don't like to be jerked around and I don't like to get other people jerked around in situations, regardless uh, of the situation. and. And I feel that we've gone down the process with Forward Development Group, with hy -V. We've negotiated. We were tough on them throughout this process within the TIF development. And, and we worked hard to get an agreement with them um, and, and be able to even potentially put this to a, a TIF vote, which we haven't even had yet. I also have to recognize that we are representing the village of Wanakee and its taxpayers, which means that if there is another option or opportunity in this situation, that we don't know about, we should gather those facts before making it a full decision. I do really support the High V location. I think it has good merit to it. As I don't, I think it was you, Brian, that pointed out that staff were all comfortable with how that is mapped out and, and what's all going to be there. Unfortunately, um, we do have a competing entity that's right there as well, and. You know, there's one thing that's troubling to me still about the High V project and. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm dealing with that internally right now, um, and that's just what our costs are for the land uh, of that project and, and where that falls and if a TIF is necessary um, as a result of that. That is, that is one of the things that probably the public isn't as aware of right now, and um, those land costs for that are, are extremely high. And if we could have those land costs being more in relation to the remainder or, or, or what's right across the street, I don't know if we'd need TIF. So I'm, I'm, I'm battling inside about that right now. Um, I really like the Hy-Vee concept. I really like um, the layout of that property. I think that's a property that's designed and, and tailored for this. I'm not so sure on the west side um, at, at this point, but I haven't seen it yet to know. That's the part when I say I'm not sure about it. Uh, the layout and, and what we're going to have for public improvements over there. I do know the public improvements we're looking at on the other side are needed for what's going to happen over there. Um, very needed. And if you drive that area or you have kids in soccer or any other sport that's in that combined zone right there with the school district, Brian, you're here, um, you know that's a busy spot, an extremely busy spot. And so to get that upgraded is important 
um, to all parties. So we've been talking for how long? Dan, how long we've we been talking? 18 months? A little less than that. A little less than that. I, I feel it, and I said the word prudent the last time, that it's prudent for us to wait two weeks to see what is going to be put over there. Um, I don't know if it's better. I don't know if it's worse. I, don't, I, I know that we're using public funds, though, and because we're using public funds, we have to be cognizant of it as a group. So my, that's my opinion. There's, there's several minds up here that I'm trying to use, not just my own. That's just my inner thoughts. So we have a choice. We can either plug forward and, and um, not consider the west side, or we should we can we can pause. I guess is probably the right word to use, Brian, um, for a couple of weeks and, and go from there. Would you guys like to hear from the folks from either side of this, mm -hmm. the developers, this evening? Mm -hmm. Sure. Sam. Yep. Mm -hmm. Would anybody like to, so Dan, why don't, Dan, you can speak first. I'd be happy to. Um, on we'll behalf of Forward Development Group. Great. Good evening. Uh, Dan O'Callaghan on behalf of Forward Development Group. Um, we did submit a letter to the board uh, earlier today outlining our position. Uh, and we appreciate um, the role that you have as a steward of the, the community's resources. Um, I think from our position, uh, the situation is quite clear. This is a, a rather um, remarkable request, I think, to have a, a competing developer um, step forward and say, um, we'd like you to stop processing um, these applications so that we can prepare our own competing application and submit that for your consideration. Um, we think our project should uh, stand on its own merits and be reviewed on its own merits. Um, we've been at this for um, more than a year now. Um, and we're nearing uh, what will hopefully be the end of that pro process. And uh, we've come to uh, um, what I think is a very good proposal, uh, being driven very hard by the, the village board all throughout the process. Um, this is a, a project that is consistent with the community's comprehensive plan. Um, it will achieve uh, a set of public improvements uh, that have been identified as much needed in the community, the connection of Simon Crestway, um, which provides for better traffic flow through that area. Um, it'll provide signals um, at that intersection, which improves pedestrian and traffic state safety near the high school, um, and a number of other things that are outlined in our, our proposal. Um, we think those ought to be evaluated, again, um, on their own merits. Um, we think it's, a, it's presenting this as a, a false choice to set this up as a choice between two grocery stores. That's really not what this is about. This is about um, a, a thoughtful planning process, uh, a mixed use development that's consistent with the community's uh, long range plan. This was a plan that was just updated not even two years ago by the community where you identify this particular um, site on the east side of uh, Q as an area that should be developed um, for exactly this type of use. Um, so we'd like you to proceed with that. We think that um, you can consider the development proposal on the other side of the highway um, if and when it comes forward. And you should do the same with that proposal as you did with our proposal, uh, which is to review it against your plans, um, review it on its own merits, and decide whether the public improvements that are associated with that project um, merit TIP assistance or not. So again, I think this is a, a setting up for a false choice to present it as um, a choice between two grocery stores. <coughs> um, and I think that the village will maybe find itself in a, a difficult situation if you get to that point where we, um, to use the, the village attorney's term, if we pause this uh, for several weeks to see what comes in, um, then what? Are we gonna be back here in April um, comparing you know, one grocery store floor plan against another, trying to figure out which we like better. I'm not sure that that kind of a choice is contemplated in um, good planning and zoning principles. So uh, we'd ask that you, um, you know, proceed certainly with uh, the applications that we've submitted. Um, we think that if you look at the village's TIF policy, if you look at um, the TIF statutes, 
you'll find that this project is consistent with all of those standards and is capable of uh, your support. And there are representatives, representatives of um, uh, our development partner in this, hy V, that I'm sure would also like the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Any questions for Dan before he goes out? So what are we giving up if we pause for two weeks? What, what harm is that going to do to your side? Um, I think first and foremost what it does is it jeopardizes our ability to complete those improvements um, this year. Uh, we initially proposed a plan that would phase those in over two years, completing them in 2020. Um, the village board and village staff certainly pushed us very hard to revise those plans to accelerate that timeline. Um, and we've committed to do that. We've um, finished engineering that now. We just got comments back from the village's consultants today. So after about a year of work, we're in a position now where we can complete that by the end of the year and are committed to do that. Um, if we are delayed by a month, that puts that in jeopardy. Um, I don't want to be overly dramatic and say that a, a two-week delay to a, a schedule is going to jeopardize the entire project. I'm more concerned about what comes next. We wait two weeks, then what? I have a question for you then. Yep. Uh, based on if we're waiting two weeks, we're not we're not stopping any of our processes for the, the TIF creation or anything, correct? We we wouldn't we, we just wouldn't be going by the schedule for having something on the agenda for the April first board meeting. We would still be moving forward um, with the first step in the TIF creation process at the March eleventh Plan Commission meeting. Um, we would still be moving forward with um, recommendations from the Plan Commission at the, and the Joint Plan Commission at the March 11th and March 12th meetings on the different um, approvals that are required from a zoning and a land division and an annexation standpoint. So, so, that, so that April 1st meeting, I know you said that we're going to cut things close. We're still having our meeting in March the week before now. Yeah. We should have everything from the other side of the road by that meeting and ready to go. True. I'm just, we, from a notice standpoint, we have zoning notices that we have to put in the newspaper for the general development plan related to the... But we still can do that. We can do it. It's just that then we would, you know, then we would have to pull the stuff from the agenda if you wanted to. I mean... Okay. So we can keep it moving forward just as is. Yeah. Up to that point, yeah. correct? We, we don't That's have to. I mean, we, yeah, we, you're right. We can... We can, we can continue with the same schedule and potentially modify it at the March 25th meeting based on the information that's provided at the March 15th, you know, by the March 15th deadline. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, anybody from the hy V folks want to speak? Hello, my name is Pete Hush. I'm Vice President of Real Estate for Hy-Vee. We appreciate your consideration tonight. Um, I wanted to come and speak to a few points here. Uh, obviously, we're a bit concerned that we've worked in good faith with the city and uh, for nearly 18 months. Uh, we think we've come to terms relative to the TIF improvements. These are public improvements that are going to be fully funded by Hy-Vee up front with essentially no risk to the city. Um, these, are, these are monies that are coming out of our budget to put those improvements in in 2019 to support the development. So uh, as I've mentioned in the past, you know, if I were Pete's development company and I came to the city and said, you know, I think you guys really have an opportunity to have a grocery store here, but the infrastructure is not there. I want to go and spend my money to grade this site, put those public improvements in place, signals, trails, roads, so that at some point, a grocery store comes into this community and is able to develop, uh, all I would be asking for is the potential for reimbursement of my investment in those public improvements should that grocery store come to fruition. I think the city would be very supportive of that. That is, you know, a third party taking on those obligations uh, to put in that infrastructure to support development, and that's what we're talking about here. We're the end user. We're not a developer that's speculative. We're here. We're buying the property. Hy-Vee will be the owner of the grocery store and C store property. We are putting forth the funds in 2019 to put the infrastructure improvement in place. We've been working with the city for nearly 18 months to come to this resolution. 
and now we get a third party who's coming in and saying, nope, we didn't like it before, but now we like it. We want to be here now. I don't think that that's a very fair way, way to deal with us. I'm not asking you to pause them. I'm saying don't pause me. I want to move forward with this project. I'm trying to keep it on the rails with our folks based on the way that this is playing out. And I think that moving forward with us, not delaying us, is a prudent way to support positive development within the community. I think one of the concerns is we can't give a definitive timeline. I can't do that. I can tell you I run our capital improvement budget. It is a 2020 project. So we are slated to start construction in 2020. But things change. I can sit here and look at this article about Festival Foods in Verona where they said we're going to build in 2018 and be open in 2019. They're not. I don't know if they're going to build this year or not. But they said the exact same thing that they're saying now. I'm telling you, I'm being honest. It's on our budget. It is our intention. But if things change, we can't be pinned down. We're not going to make an investment like this and not build a grocery store. We are going to build a grocery store if we are approved. But I can't have a definitive timeline. I'm being honest, upfront, saying that it is our intention, this is our timeline, but things can change. I don't know what's going to happen within our industry tomorrow or the next day, but we're making the upfront commitment to put the public infrastructure improvements that you want in place on our dime, day one, just let us move forward with the process. Thank you. Any questions, Guy? Okay, thank you. Anybody on the uh, other side of the street want to speak tonight? Good evening. Uh, I'm Brian Bauman, Senior Vice President, General Counsel for Festival Foods. I've spoken to several of you in the past, uh, folks from the state, from the village, um, from the agencies. And I wanted to first of all say thank you. Thank you for even entertaining us to this point. We really appreciate it. Um, I, I want to touch on one thing, and that's the, the reference to it's not a competition between grocery stores, and I would agree with that. This is a more of a project-based issue that I think we're discussing. Hy-Vee is an excellent operator. We have the utmost respect for what Hy-Vee does. Um, they're much bigger than we are. Um, they're based in Iowa. They've got, I believe, over 300 stores now. It's an employee-owned company. We're a family-owned employee-owned company as well. We've, uh, we've always had the utmost respect for Hy-Vee. However, um, I think that it's always good for a municipality to have an option. And as you touched on, this pause is, we believe, very short in nature. I can stand up here and guarantee to you that we will have our submission in prior to the March deadline so that we can appear on the village board meeting as we've talked about. Um, the other thing I can do is I can say that we are working on our TIF request right now, and whatever TIF request we do make will be a TIF request that applies to all three of the commercial lots in this development. My understanding is that the project across the street, the original TIF request was significantly higher and has since been scaled back along with the size of the project um, that it applies to. So I would ask the, the village board to, to keep that in mind and um, allow themselves to have the chance to have an apples to apples comparison. Um, a couple of things that I think are important to note, I will stand up here and I will tell you that we will deliver a 2020 project. We will open for business in 2020. That's our plan. We can build a store from start to finish in seven months. We've done that in Green Bay North, we're doing that in the Hales Corners, and we're going to do it in Verona here this year. So. Um, I'm not sure what article they're referencing um, with 2018 or 2019, but I don't, I'm not familiar with that project. I can stand up here and tell you that we can deliver that in 2020. Um, I think that our project has a couple advantages. I think the fact that the project is already located in Wanakee, there's no annexation required. Um, and we have a developer partner that has been fantastic to work with. I mean, Don and Jerry, I think they're well known here in the village, have always delivered for this community, um, have always made sure that the projects that they support and that they do are a win-win for everybody. Um, 
when we first started talking to Don and Jerry, uh, I think we saw a real mutual respect right away in how we do business. Um, we simply want to give the village an option to choose what they think is best for their constituents. If that's the Hy-Vee project, hats off to it. If it's the festival project, that would be great. But we really do believe in this community and we believe in the product that we offer. We believe in our developer partner and we would just like the chance to give you the opportunity to make an apples to apples comparison um, and decide what's best for you and your constituents. Okay, any questions from board members? Thanks, Brian. All right. You've got the article right here if you want to. Any, any, any okay, we don't need that. It's okay. We don't, any, anybody else want to speak from the other side? Okay. Okay. So hearing, hearing that, everyone, um, I don't know if that accomplished any or changed any of your thought patterns right now, but at least you got to hear. Um, there's passion on both sides uh, of what this is, and uh, I don't think we're going to have a bad choice with either <laughs> either side. I, I, I agree with uh, what was stated, that this isn't necessarily a high V or a festival. It is what's going to be best in, in for the developments and, and how we're going to go about that. We've seen what it is for high V at this point. We haven't seen what the other side is. Because there's public funds, I'm inclined to make sure that we uh, look at the other side too. Um, so that, that, that's my feelings on this. And I don't believe we're going to slow anything down. We can continue <coughs> moving forward as if um, high our development group is what's going through. Um, but we can also at our next meeting entertain to see. That, that's my, my feelings on this right now. Um, if there wasn't any public funds, I think I would know what my decision would be today. But because there's public funds, I have to be cognizant of that. Other comments? Yes, Susan. I agree with you. The public funds makes us have that responsibility. It's just a thing we have to do. I don't want to decide between grocery stores either, but I think we should tell both parties to keep moving forward. I don't see a reason why we have to delay. If festival comes with their proposal, we can look at it and make a decision when we need to. That was my thoughts too. And, and as I was listening, you never know what the market's going to do uh, on one side. And for some reason, if, if um, the, the high V side of it said, you know, we're, we're not going to build a store there. Maybe they're going to sell that land to somebody else to build a store. Maybe, who knows what, what's going to happen to that festival. may have a proposal that would be a second nature that we would maybe come into first place at that point, assuming Hy-Vee didn't do anything. We don't know any of that right now because we haven't <coughs> seen anything with festival, but if we have some of those answers in the picture, uh, it just allows for us to, to make a better decision. Great. So. I think what Sam said makes a lot of sense. Basically, I don't know that we need to pause at all but I think we do need to at least pay attention to what's coming forward. So um, maybe with increased sensitivity to the timeline. Are you awake? <laughs> I couldn't see your face, that's why. Okay, any comments? Well, I think uh, we're in a, as far as the community, we're in a no-lose situation. I just feel like we, I, I wanna make sure we manage our commitments. I mean, if we, haven't promised anything, I'm good with that. I guess I just feel that Simon Crestway thing has to happen somehow, that does. I know that, that Mr. Tierney is a fantastic developer and I I think it's we have both wins. I just don't see how, it's that very hard for me to feel otherwise. Because I think the one has to happen, the Simon Crestway part. I mean, for, these, for the kids that are coming, as I drive through there, I'm always worried about those kids coming across the as they dive out onto the road there. That's what I see every day. But at the same time, the Mr. Tierney's properties have all been spectacular for our community. So, so I'm torn. How's torn feel? <laughs> okay. I Can I just ask a clarifying question? When you say the Simon Questway improvements, are you talking about the signalized intersection or are you talking about the road? The signalized and the road. Okay. Okay. I like what Sam said, sorry, I don't think we necessarily need to pause if both parties want to go forward and 
We're very okay with that. So I think if I'm hearing it right, we don't want to have any pause. Okay. We want it to move forward as, as if we're going forward with this project. Fair, everybody so far? Um, but we still want to hear what the other side has to say at our next meeting, what they're proposing. Because we can always obviously change course if, we, if need be at that point. So we should po basically... My concern is the other side comes in and says we don't need any TIF assistance. Mm -hmm. And where does that put us with a but for test? I'm concerned about that side of it. I, I think that's a, a valid statement. I would say this. So what I'm hearing is we are moving forward with both projects from a timeline standpoint, which means that we should essentially plan on putting the notices in the newspaper for the April 1st Village Board meeting that would relate to uh, the zoning and whatever notice, other public hearing notices that are required for the Hy-Vee project. And we are going to get a submission by March 15th from Kill County Farms West and from uh, Festival Foods. We will evaluate that. This same item will be on the agenda for your March 25th meeting, and you'll make a decision. You know, you may make the same decision that you made tonight, or you'll just reevaluate the situation at that meeting. Okay, and it will not slow down the process on the other side at this point in any way. Nothing that you're doing tonight would slow down the process on the other side for either projects. Okay, is everybody good with that? Do we need to have a motion on that, or just is it, I don't think just you need a motion staff to, to operate that way. Okay, everybody good with that? Does so that that same the same motion we had last week too? That'll be on our next agenda for the twenty fifth. Then it sounds to me like you you all want this on the what? agenda. For, did we make a motion at the last meeting? No. Oh, okay, okay. We just didn't take action. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, everybody. Sue, are you comfortable? Bill, Sam. Joe? All right. Everybody it's unanimous on that. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next, we have discussed draft TIF agreement with hy V. This one, I assume we are going into closed session. Well, we can give an update in open session. I mean, we've had a lot of conversations with hy V over the TIF agreements and the related tax agreement. I think we've made a lot of progress in our discussions. We are essentially down to, um, I would say, a handful of items that we need to discuss with the village board from a negotiating standpoint to get your position before we're going to be in a position to respond to the versions of the agreement that we received from Hy-Vee today. And so this is falls squarely within the uh, closed session language of us having to be able to talk to you all in order to get your position on some key terms and conditions for the TIF agreement. Okay. So read it. You can go right ahead. Okay. The village board may convene in closed session as authorized by Wisconsin statute 19.851E for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. The village board may reconvene in open session to discuss and take action on the subject matter discussed in closed session. I make a motion to go out closed session. Second. Motion by made, second by Bill. We'll do a roll call vote in one second, please. I just want to recognize we have a Boy Scout here. I didn't see him because John, you were in his way, so I couldn't <laughs> see him back there. Um, so I just want to recognize, can you stand up, say your name, and, and what you're here for? Uh, I'm Ray Nerlowski. I'm from Awesome. I think you deserve a round of applause for getting a conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Joe Zitzelberger? Yes. Sam Alwyn? Yes. Sue Springman? Yes. Bill Random? Yes. Aaron Moran? Yes. Chris Selman? Yes. 